Hello students, in this video we'll discuss Clairaut's theorem on geodesics of surfaces of revolution. Let's let S be a surface of a revolution. I'll parameterize it, like so, as we typically do. F of u cosine v, f of u sine v, and then g of u like that. Beautiful. And then what can we say? Then we can say the first fundamental form was we compute in the past. The first fundamental form. is equal to what? Is equal to du squared plus f of u quantity squared dv squared. Excellent. And so now what I'd like to do is I'd like to write down the geodesic equations. So in my geodesic equations, so recall, we have two geodesic equations, d by dt of e u prime plus f v prime is equal to one half e u u prime squared plus 2fu u prime v prime plus gu v prime squared. And we get the second equation with f and g in those places over here. So let's fill in this first geodesic equation for the surface revolution. It says d by dt. Well, my e is equal to 1. So I'm going to have the u prime and my f is equal to 0. So that's just d by dt of u prime is equal to what? Well, my e u is going to be 0. My f u is going to be 0. My g u is going to be what? My GU is just going to be 2F, so I have 1 half, so I have a 2FF prime. So this is 2 times 1 half times F times F prime, right? And that's a D, then that coefficient over there, so that's my GU, so it's going to be 2FF prime times the 1 half, and that's going to be a V prime squared, V prime quantity squared. And so this implies that our differential equation is U double prime is equal to FF prime and then V prime quantity squared like that. That's my first geodesic equation on a surface revolution. Let's write down the second geodesic equation. So it's going to be in, so the second geodesic equation is, has what form? It has the form d by dt f u prime plus g v prime, right, is equal to the same thing over here, just with sub v's, with v partials. Right? And so will that equation be, so now my f is zero, my g is exactly just f squared, right? So I'm going to have d by dt of f squared v prime, beautiful, is equal to what? Is equal to, well, where are the v derivatives? The v derivative of u is equal to zero, the v derivative of f is equal to zero, and the v derivative of g is equal to zero. So this is just equal to zero, which says that f squared, f squared v prime is a constant. Okay, and that's going to be an important property of our clear old result over here, okay? So we have two geodesic equations over here. So these are my geodesic equations. Okay, now we're in a position to talk about Clairaut's theorem. Okay, so what does Clairaut's theorem state? So a proposition, and this is due to Clairaut. It says if psi is the angle between the meridians, And of course, where are the meridians? Of course, the meridians on a surface revolution come when you have V being equal to a particular value of a constant, right? So V equals constant. So that corresponds to V equals V0, or R sub U. The angle between the meridians and gamma dot, then if gamma is a geodesic, then f, what? Then f sine theta is going to be a constant, right? Let me think for a second here. Yep, then f sine theta sine phi is a constant. And furthermore, if gamma is not a parallel, part of a parallel, And 
f sine theta is a constant, then f is a geodesic, then gamma is a geodesic. Okay. So there's two parts of this proof, right? So the first part is relatively straightforward, right? Here's the proof. Let's suppose that gamma is a geodesic. Okay. There was gamma dot. Then gamma dot, or gamma prime, is going to be what? That implies that gamma prime is going to be, um, is going to be what? Is going to be cosine, th cosine psi, cosine psi, r sub u, because r sub u is what? That's treating v as a constant, right? So that's going to be the cosine of the angle. Plus, um, plus what? Plus the sine of psi r v. But of course, this has to be a unit vector, so I have to divide by what? I have to divide by the square root of the g coefficient. So that's going to be just over f, right? And gamma prime is also equal to what? Is also equal to u prime r u plus v prime r v, right? And so what that tells me is that tells me that v prime, hence v prime, is equal to what? v prime is over here, and that's also v prime, so it's going to be sine of psi over f. So if I multiply both sides by f squared, the conclusion is what? f squared v prime is equal to what? Is equal to f sine psi. But by assumption, what do I know about this? Since gamma is a geodesic, I know that f squared v prime is a constant. So this is a constant over here, and that proves the forward direction of what we have over here. Beautiful. So if you're a geodesic, then f sine psi is a constant. Beautiful. Now let's suppose the second condition is true. In other words, suppose that we're not part of a what? That we're not part of a parallel, and f sine uh, psi is constant. So if f sine, f sine psi constant, constant, let's call it c1, and that implies what? What can we say about v then? So we can say that um, if I divide by f squared to both sides of the equation, I can conclude what? I can conclude that v prime over here, v prime, which is, um, I, it's going to be sine psi, it's going to be c1 over f squared, right? So if I divide c1 by f squared, that's sine psi over f, right? That's v prime. And so that's this equation over here. So if this is a constant, then we get this, re this relationship over here. Now I know what? I know that by the unit speed parameterization, I know that u prime squared plus f squared v prime squared is equal to 1, right? And that tells me that u prime squared, u prime squared, is equal to 1 minus f squared times c1 over c1 squared, of course, over f to the power of 4, right? Great. And so now let me differentiate both sides of this equation, right? So of course, this is really f to the power negative 2 over here, right? So this whole expression over here is really 1 minus, this is really 1 minus c1 squared f to the negative 2, OK? So if I differentiate this equation over here, I'm going to get 2u prime u double prime is equal to what? Is equal to a positive 2, positive 2, c1 squared times what? Times f to the power of negative 3, like that. Great. OK. Now I can write this, of course, as a 1 factor of f over here. So this is my equation. And it times what? I forgot the chain rule by f prime. OK. So now, what can I say over here? The 2's going to cancel out. And I have u prime u double prime is equal to c1. Now, what will the c1 squared turn into? So I know that c1 squared, I know that c1 squared over f squared is going to be v prime. Uh, is going to be v prime. So this is going to be a v prime. So if I, what do I want to do over here? I want to put an f, and I want to put an extra f over here, right? So I'll write this as c1 squared f to the negative 4 f prime and then f. That makes it the same exact expression. And now c1 squared f to the negative 4 power is really v prime squared. So this is really equal to f prime f itself and then v prime 
squared, right? So in other words, what can I say over here? I can say over here that this is close to my geodesic equation over here, and I'm missing one extra factor over here, so what is the, what's the result? So assuming that, uh, what's the, what's, I'm missing one extra factor, where's my extra factor over here? Da, 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 da. And then I need what? And then I need extra a, a u prime over here, so I have an extra u prime. So that implies, good. So that implies what? Let me think, where am I missing this thing over here? Oh, by the chain one, yeah, u prime, u prime. Now, since u is not part of a parallel over here, since we're not part of a parallel, I know u prime can't be zero, and that forces u double prime to be equal to what? That forces u double prime to be equal to f, and then f prime, f prime, and then what? And then a um, v prime quantity squared, and that forces the second to GDS equation over here, so this is satisfied, and then this equation is satisfied, so the conclusion now is that if this is constant, then this, then this curve over here, gamma, has to be a geodesic, and that's Clairaut's relationship. So it's a very, very useful thing because oftentimes it's very it's informative because remember that f is the distance away from the axis of rotation, so f is the distance from the axis of rotation. And so this, this expression of your f sine, th f sine psi being a constant, it's oftentimes very easy to verify if that is, is true to prove that something's a geodesic over here, right? So you want to typically think of like the situation when you're on a sphere over here, right? So if you're on a sphere, then we know the geodesics are the great circles, right? And so of course, what's the angle over there? So that's the loxodromic angle over there. So in other words, you're able to get deep geometric intuition from this Clairo theorem without having to worry about solving a system of second order differential equations or nonlinear. So it's a very powerful geometric mechanism for understanding geodesics on surfaces of revolution. Thank you very much.